Okay, we are back with In the Clinch, where we tackle and grapple everything martial art. Brought to you by Inosanto.com. CSW for EricPaulson.com. Professor Sauer in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with PedroSauer.com. And of course, the Academy Min MN.com. All right, uh, cool. So today we're going to talk about why uh, martial arts. Like, why should someone think about training martial arts for themselves or maybe for their kid? To start with, I thought we'd give you guys a quick rundown of uh, who we are and our background a little bit. My name is Andy Gron. I grew up in Minneapolis and I was bullied as a child. I watched a lot of cool martial arts flicks and I was I got into it when I was like 17 and I never left. So uh, go ahead, guys. Okay, Greg Nelson, and I grew up high energy, just guns are blazing all the time. So for me, it was uh, athletics first, and then I found the martial arts through ninja movies <laughs> and all this other stuff. And I just uh, gravitated towards it, and again, starting young, never stopped. And it's been something that I believe is my purpose and my passion, and I'm sticking to it. My name is Nat McIntyre. Uh, very similar stories to these guys. I, well, I was a really timid kid, kind of bullied too, and uh, started watching kung fu movies, Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, all the all those old school movies, and I uh, started doing karate when I was ten years old, and kept going, never stopped, kept doing other martial arts, and then uh, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, MMA. That's this sort of final stop and just haven't stopped kept going ever since cool so um, when we're thinking about this I like to um, what what comes to my mind when I think about why martial arts I think about some of the stories of some of our students over the years and in particular I had uh, you know early on when I was teaching I was doing private lessons and I had a student come in who had never done ran a mile or done anything and she was like a 35 year old um, housewife and had a lot of time on her hand and I just started uh, teaching her martial arts just that's what she wanted to do soon enough she was like hey you know what I ran a mile this weekend and then the next thing is she did a 5k and the next thing she did a marathon and pretty soon she's she and her husband are both doing triathlons they do the Ironman in Hawaii now and I don't do uh, personal training anymore but um, that was that was in my 20s um, just a little bit of martial arts training inspired her to go out and do these great things and that was like a real pivotal moment in my development as an instructor so do you guys have any other stories about kids or adults like that that you've experienced i mean we could probably come up with hundreds that lives have been changed but i'm just going to bring up one right now because i'm doing privates with one of our students uh hank he's been with us for a long time he is uh in his 70s has a ton of health problems, you know, a lot of things, but martial arts has kept him vibrant, he keeps him going. He's, he, even his doctor said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it because it's helping you. It's keeping you going. And uh, to me, that's, that's what it's about. What keeps us going in life, what makes us feel better, gives us more energy. And man, for so many people, martial arts has done that. Yeah, for sure. I, it's funny, I remember the first time that someone came up to me and said that stuff that I taught them helped them accomplish their goals. And I, I just, I don't think I had given given it much thought or really worried about it. I was focused on my own, my own fighting and progress, but he, uh, he became a, he became a air marshal and uh, he was a real young guy when he started training with me. And uh, he came back years later to the school. He had moved away, since moved away, and but he came back to the school and he he uh, just wanted to thank me for helping him. He said he would have never had the confidence to, to become an air marshal if he wouldn't have done martial arts. So, and yeah, we have numerous stories of people uh, telling us those things, how it's just changed their mindset and given them confidence to do things they never thought they would do so yeah it's interesting that without even consciously trying to teach sort of life enhancement skills or you know sometimes called life skills we've gotten these results and even with kids i know there's a, greg has a story about somebody who 
who ended up giving us a bunch of stuff. And they uh, did that because their child um, became very successful in our program. Well, we weren't even teaching. We were teaching kids exactly like we were teaching adults, more or less. And we weren't explicitly talking about life stuff. Um, so, um, you know, when you talk about the challenges that kids face in our world today, is bullying a challenge? And does martial arts help kids who are bullied? Yeah, yeah, yeah. always. With, without a doubt. I think more than anything, when you're starting to train martial arts and you're learning to be consistent and you're starting to understand that you have these skills and these abilities and you're working around people and you're learning that you can defend yourself, you know, emotionally it gets you stronger, psychologically it gets you stronger, of course physically it gets you stronger and that's the whole thing. And I was uh, just thinking about that actually this morning. Through a lot of the hard physical training that I've done over the years, you know, you start to develop a resilience emotionally, mentally, you know, and in, in some cases, you know, spiritually, just because you, you learn how to push through all those, you know, problems and challenges and struggles and you figure out a way to work through them. And that's what I've done through the martial arts. And I just kind of look at everything for me personally in that kind of through that lens, the martial arts lens. How would I deal with this problem fighting? How would I deal with this on the mat? How would I deal with this consistently everyday training? And it's pretty much the same. It all comes to me. It boils down to the same discipline, work ethic, push through, endure. That's it. Martial arts. I just remember being, once I started martial arts, I just remember how just learning and getting better at something, um, I enjoyed it so much that I realized that I didn't have to be what I thought I had to be like a Tim. I didn't have to be timid. I didn't have to be, I didn't have to let myself sort of get pushed around. Um, so it just really changed my whole mindset. And I think, I think it just helps kids realize they, they can get stronger. They don't have to be what they think they are. So they now, can do some, you know, a lot of times we're teaching, uh, violent moves. And I think people are, get concerned that you know kids are going to be violent um but i think because it is teaching violence that everyone who is a coach and instructor is explicitly trying to explain that uh and and sort of role model uh good behavior a courtesy respect and kindness because when you have that power and sort of that walk softly but carry a big stick um mindset and have you ever had the experience of a parent come up to you and you know they've been the kid has been hearing stuff like be respectful be courteous um don't use this stuff at home and don't use this stuff at, on your schoolmates have you ever had a parent come up to you and had the experience of they've been telling their kid to clean their room or brush their teeth or whatever and then they, some, they hear it from someone else that they have as a role model that they look up to their tough martial arts teacher, and then they do it. Yeah, I mean, I think we hear that a lot from from parents. They they can also, you know, I liken it to to athletics the same way. Martial arts to me, I never really looked differently at sports that I was doing and the martial arts as far as building that confidence and learning yeah, how that's to a work. Good point. I just was it was to me it was all the same. And martial arts is not the only thing that does this, but yeah, yeah. for sure. And it's uh, and I just looked at it as a, a way of developing myself. I remember my parents trying to figure out how to get me to clean my room and do this, and then all of a sudden, one of my coaches talked about how the little things, like picking up stuff and doing things around the house, makes you a stronger, better athlete, a gymnast. And I was like, whoa, I want to be mm. a better gymnast. That's mm -hmm. for me. And so I started doing that and that just carried into the martial arts. And I think that's, it. that is something that's uh, really important. You just learn those little, little things, make a big deal. Big I difference. thought that was the, you know, the sort of the philosophy of martial arts, this respect and discipline. I found that really attractive, even when I was a kid, that there's this thing that you can start doing. There's a, this philosophy to build your strength and to build your your mentality of how to approach life. I found that really attractive and that, that definitely helped me. And I think it's, it's really great for, for kids. Now, uh, what about kids who might already, um, be the bully or people that are the bully? How, 
how is it that martial arts can change them? In my mind, you know, there's this relationship between strength and, and kindness, and there's a difference between being, you know, gentle and being completely helpless. And w once you kind of have that big stick or once you kind of have that power and you're around people that, you know, are super respectful and super courteous and, you know, carry themselves with that type of decorum, you start to mimic that behavior. But, you know, we haven't had too many experiences that I can think of off the top of my head where the parent admitted to us at least that their kid was being a bully. Mm -hmm. But do you guys have any uh, thoughts on that? You know... On the other side of the coin from the... Yeah, the, I think... From the bully? If you... you know, especially being in a school where it's being addressed constantly, if you're kind of the, the kid that's pushing around other kids and you're being talked to by the, the instructor and then they're challenging you and you start doing things that are really hard and you find it difficult. And I think what happens without even knowing it, you start to realize that, man, maybe these kids are having a difficult time too because look at how difficult it is for me. And over time, it just kind of takes away that, that, that edge. I think mm -hmm. that's a big thing. For, for me, I'll, I'll just do it like this. I remember because athletics and sports and martial arts was always really easy for me. Even when I was teaching, you know, as a kid, I could do stuff and I'd be like, God, how can this kid not do this? You know? And once I started getting into martial arts where you're pushing, you get super tired and you, and you start getting to positions where, man, you get tapped out, you get caught by something. It changes how you look at things. And I think I, the same thing happens with, with kids. Mm -hmm. Well, I, the one thing I know is even even with adults, um, they come in. Sometimes someone comes in and they they know the reputation of the gym. They know there's fighters here, so they have it in their mind, sort of how they think they're supposed to behave. They're supposed to act tough. Or they're supposed to walk, you know, a certain way and talk a certain way. And then they see these really really accomplished fighters like incredibly tough guys they've seen these guys knock people out and then they see the way that they behave and these guys are acting really courteous and really nice and they're respectful and they realize hey i can just be myself i don't have to be this sort of whatever character they have in their mind so and i think that probably affects children too seeing these adults behaving in a positive way Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a couple other challenges that I hear from parents, right, especially right now, um, two more. One is ADHD um, and focus. We've had, you know, uh, so many children who were who have ADHD come in and do martial arts, and then their parents come back and they're like, "He's doing so much better in school. He's so much more focused. He's able to sit still." He's, you know, we've had parents whose children have totally gotten off medication for ADHD as well. Um, but, you know, during the pandemic, it's, it's got to be a huge struggle for a lot of parents out there. But do you have any thoughts on kids who struggle with uh, focusing in grades and, and school and, and uh, attention? Well, that was me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 100%. Definitely. I mean, I was bouncing off the walls, couldn't focus on stuff. And so when I got something that I enjoyed doing... And that was martial arts, and I wanted to do it, and, and in the different you know, sports I was doing. Things changed because I realized that, man, if I, you know, for me it was like initially sports and, and wrestling, because I consider wrestling a martial art, right? But if I wasn't doing well in school, then I couldn't wrestle. Mm -hmm. So I, I figured it out. And, and plus, I think another thing is the fact that you're getting out all this extra energy. You're pushing yourselves and you're and now you're a little bit more able to focus on things because your your brain's not bouncing all over the place because you know, you've pushed yourself, you've done some stuff, you focused on something and you learn through martial arts that you're focusing on technique and you're doing something over and over and you start to slowly train your brain even if you don't even know you're doing it as a little kid, you're starting to learn how to train your brain to follow a certain pattern and, and do things over and over. Mm -hmm. And that's what school is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't imagine the amount of diagnosis that has gone up for ADHD and ADD with everything that's gone on this past year. All the screen time and 
the the remote learning and all that stuff. So, um, you know, martial arts is definitely going to be something that's going to pull pull kids out of that, um, out, out of all that attention to screens. I just yeah, think that's, I mean that's sort of the next thing that I the next huge big challenge. Yeah. The last one on the topic of children is that when we were kids, you know, you get home from school and then you'd get on your bike and you didn't come home until yeah. it was dinner and you know you would go to the playground or you know you weren't on an ipad or a ps4 you know um and if you look at the obesity rates right now in our country and where those kids are going to be at uh, when they get older based on where they are now and it is not yeah. uh, the the predictions are not good yeah so kids need an outlet to be active and to do something that's mindful that is engaging that's not a screen but yeah talk to any pediatrician and they'll, they'll tell you kids now um activity and obesity and i think martial arts is just one of the many activities that that can be a solution for kids um as far as that goes now let's talk a little bit about adults so uh right now there is so much uh there's such a spike in crime and, and violence around the country. And um, what do victimizers normally do when they're searching for victims, right? They search for people that look underconfident, right? And look unaware. And one of the things that you learn in martial arts is confidence and also a sense of your awareness and a sense of your uh, surroundings. You know, the average... Uh, victimizer doesn't have an alternative plan they have an alternative victim i heard about this study where they took a bunch of people who were uh former criminals and they had them like pick victims out from a crowd and a lot of them picked the same person right and what they said was they look unaware and not very confident and so i think martial arts is kind of the perfect remedy to help you know give people that those two skills to avoid uh, bad situations to begin with, right? Yeah, 100%. Awareness is obviously your number one self-defense, seeing things, right? And if you're being told about it and you're talking about it and it's being addressed, you just become more aware. And the second thing I think is, you know, when you're pushing yourself, be it Thai boxing or boxing <laughs> or, you know, kickboxing or jujitsu or wrestling or MMA, whatever you're doing, you're getting in better shape. The more shape, the better shape you get, the more confident you get, the more confident you get. It changes the way you look and how you look at things. And again, if that's what people are looking at to victimize, and all of a sudden, without you even knowing it, you're starting to carry yourself differently and you're looking at people differently, well, without ever fighting, you're defending yourself. And that's a huge part of self-defense. Yeah, just being aware. I mean, if you start getting in shape, you're training hard, becoming more confident, your shoulders are going to pull back a little bit. You're going to lift your chin a little bit higher. You're going to walk more confident. You're just going to feel better about yourself. And people are going to read that. I would think a victimizer is going to, they're going to see that immediately. Yeah, and be like, ah, that's a little it's bit. It's little things like looking yeah. somebody in the eye and shaking their hand, which you do in class all the time. You're meeting new people. You're developing a sense of camaraderie. And then you go out into the world, you look someone in the eye, you shake them your hand. <clears throat> You're telling them, like, I'm not a victim, right? If you look down at the ground and you don't acknowledge people, like, now you're becoming more of the prey mindset. Um, so so it develops confidence. It develops people the sense that they could if they had to, right? Um, another huge uh, area of focus for people training in martial arts is cross... And, and for kids, too. I guess this ties in, but cross-training... Um, in the off season, how many pro athletes do we know or know of that um, train in martial arts in the off season, right? So, talk about that a little bit. I think the big thing with any kind of cross training, especially martial arts, is that it's all about attribute development. You can get this, you get a, w different ways to develop your speed, your coordination, your dexterity, your conditioning, your power, your strength. You know, footwork, all these things are developed through these different martial arts. And, you know, this started many, many, many years ago when Guru Dan and Achan Chai and Sifu Francis Fong and Sifu Lair Hartzell started working with the Dallas Cowboys in the 70s. And it's now happening with all sorts of, of football teams and basketball teams and hockey teams. And, you know, a lot of high-level athletes are training martial arts to develop, you know, 
two things. One, increase their attributes. Also, it's healthier for their body because now they're not just doing the same thing over mm -hmm. and over and mm -hmm. over and get that repetitive wear out. They're now opening up their joints a little bit differently, and I think that's a huge thing. That's mm -hmm. the reason I cross train, not you know doing mixed martial arts. I always say truly mixed martial arts. I think the weaponry, just swinging the sticks around and in those nice circular fluid movement patterns has been huge in the therapy of my shoulders and elbows and wrists and everything else. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a big part of the training, this cross training. It's becoming more and more uh, accepted to be training in all kinds of different sports now, correct? Even as a young, like young kids are training training many different many different things at one time to help them just develop so yeah um another issue that uh, ties in it tie, that i think about when we talk about this stuff is uh how many times have we had a, a dad or a, a man who played college football or was a wrestler or did high school sports and life has kind of gotten in the way um, or a mom who's put the family first, and, um, and now they come in and um, they train. And, and five years later, the story is, when I came in, I couldn't sleep. I had anxiety. I was overweight. I had high cholesterol and high blood pressure. And this has really given me my youth back, right? Martial arts is, a, is kind of a fountain of youth in some ways. Yeah, I think all the, the training and the different things that we're doing, for me having that energy and vitality is a huge part of life and living, right? A lot of people kind of, the more shape they get in, the better they feel. You know, they're starting to get more flexible. They start to realize, man, this is changing my life. So what else happens? They start looking at, man, I got to eat better. I got to drink more water. I'm going to try to sleep so I can get ready for training. So it's kind of a snowball effect for health and well-being. And that's mm -hmm. such a huge thing. Yeah, changing one habit can create a cascade of other really positive things. So sometimes, you know, just training starting martial arts could be could be that one the linchpin that changes everything. So you start training, you stop smoking, the next thing you're starting to jog, next thing you're running the 5k, you know. Yeah. And we've seen that over and over and over. So it's uh, very powerful. So when I started, uh, Greg used to teach $5 Fridays, and we would do super hard Thai <laughs> boxing. And at the end, he would give us like a speech, and he one day he gave this speech. So you come in, you leave your problems outside by the door. You come in, and you do the work, and you know what happens? By the time you're done with doing your workout, they got tired of waiting for you, and when you leave, they're gone. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, martial arts is like, a, I heard this before too, that martial arts is like a little mini vacation from your life. You come into the gym... And if you go into the gym and you're on the treadmill or you do a fitness class, your mind can tend to wander to the stresses of your day and of your life and the problems in general. But when someone has got you in full mount and you're trying to escape or someone is holding the kick pads and the tie pads in front of you and you're going to kick and punch and knee and elbow those things, your brain can't focus on those things that make you upset so it's like a little mini vacation um during the week that you can get away from the world so um that's have you guys heard stories about stuff like that or do you guys have anything to add for sure oh yeah i mean i mean originally i remember thinking about that going and when i go into the the gym i have my problems in this backpack and i leave my backpack on the outside when i come in either two things have happened one problems weren't that big of a deal and they left because they got bored or two because i trained because i was able to totally change my physiology i start to think differently about what that problem was i'm able to address it from a different point of view which is a big you know benefit as well as opposed to just delving and digging in and just working you're getting nowhere so coming in and training and you're totally separated from it you can't focus on anything else other than what you're doing because it's so uh intense or you're 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 focused on not getting submitted you're not or you're focusing on doing well on the tie pads and kicking and punching man it just changes how you look at whatever you're looking at outside the academy so that's that's i think is a huge benefit 
I tell new students that come in, you know, before they go on the mat, they're going to bow. And when they, st they leave everything outside off of the mat, and when they step on the mat, their mind is clear, and they're going to just focus on themselves. And I want, and I tell them too, I want the, want the school to be like a refuge. So when they come in here, their problems are, they are not thinking about their problems. They're going to let them go for a while, and they're going to be able to forget it. And when they come back to whatever issues they have outside of the gym, they're going to be stronger. They're just going to feel more relaxed and be able to deal with it. So, all right. Well, um, so people out there that are listening, um, some people may think like, what is the best style I should do? And, and, uh, people will sometimes ask that. And, you know, we have done a variety of different martial arts over the years, and I am not, uh, an expert in any specific style, right? To me, there is no best style. Like if it's self-defense, look, mm -hmm here's the reality. Most of us are not going to die in a knife fight or get into a fight at all. Um, so you have to keep that in mind. Like what's going to kill us? What's going to get, what's going to get you? Obesity, cancer, heart disease, high cholesterol and blood pressure. And the real self-defense is, you know, when I think of my martial arts, it's about health and energy. It's about, you know, reminding myself being around positive people sleeping right, uh, resting right, um, eating right, all that stuff, right? And that's the that's why I'm doing martial arts. It's not because I think someone's going to come try to stab me or anything like that. I mean, and that's the statistical reality that's going on right now. So that's kind of why I do it. But look, if, you, if your job is uh, to arrest people or to bounce people or you know you're a jailer and you know you might have to go hands-on, Maybe Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is the thing for you. If you want to be competitive and you want to have a strong sense of camaraderie and be around people, then maybe MMA or, or Jiu-Jitsu or Thai boxing is the thing for you. If you want to do, if you're really into mindfulness and you want to just be in the moment, maybe some traditional thing with lots of kata is the thing for you. Um, but the best one is really one that you love and practice a lot in my mind. So do you guys have anything to add to that? Yeah, I think that's the biggest factor. You do what you love, and you love what you do, and that's going to give you more passion to do it. Yeah. And the more you do it, all of a sudden, that same joy and that same feeling of happiness that you get doing that martial art may drift over to another martial art. That's how my journey has been. And to this day, mm -hmm. I'm still doing all the different martial arts that I've done over the years. You know, I... People are like, well, how would that help you in fighting? I go, what are you talking about? I love doing it. That's why I do it. I don't do it because I'm going to go out and get in a fight. Bottom line, I haven't been in a fight since I haven't wanted to be in one. Yeah. I mm. mean, that's just the bottom line. So, but what am I fighting? My, you know, health, making sure I stay healthy, you know, fighting bad habits, fighting, you know, lack of discipline, fighting all these things that are chipping away that Andy was talking about, that's what our real battle's against. You know, we want to be healthy, have energy, full of vitality, mentally fit, physically fit, emotionally fit, and doing something that you love and loving doing it and trying to figure out ways to be healthier so you can do it more, there it is. That's the secret. That is it. I just tell, like, new students, they, they sometimes ask me, well, what, what do you think I should do? Should I do Muay Thai or should I do Jiu Jitsu or I, I just don't know what to do. And I'm like, well, what sounds like more fun? Because that is the one that you're going to enjoy. You're going to develop passion for it. You're going to enjoy coming and you're going to do it more. You can't spoon feed yourself something that you don't really enjoy. So do the one, pick the one that you like and that's the best one for you. Because again, what coach uh, Greg said that that passion leads into other things. So eventually you may, you might start with Muay Thai and then eventually you start doing Jiu Jitsu. And we've seen that a million times. People start with one, they really get into it and then they start trying other things and they get into those things too. And they're all going to make you healthier and happier. So I just don't think there is a, a best martial art. So yeah, it depends on what you're looking for. So Indeed. when people go to a school and they're, people around the world listening to this and they're like what should i be looking for look for somewhere that everybody is smiling 
It's got a good vibe. You feel super comfortable. People are probably working out kind of hard. There's some sweating going on. And it just should feel very comfortable. And go watch some classes and, and check it out. So do you have any advice for people that are, you know, um, trying to figure out which school should they go check out and, and which one should they join? Yeah, I think that's a good good set of things. If people are smiling, they're sweating, they're, they're look like they're having a great time. There's no attitude. You're safe. But at the same time, you can push yourself and you can take it to the level that you want to take it to. I think that's uh, that's kind of the the path right there. Yeah, you should feel... You should feel comfortable. And the, I've been in schools where you're like, ah, the vibe in here is kind of negative. And if you feel that and it feels negative, it's probably not the place for you. Um, people should be, they should be helpful. They should be smiling and they should be having a good time. And it should look like they're having fun. Even if they're training super, super hard, they should be look like they're having a blast. We watched sparring today. Guys are sparring. They're Man, they're going for it. They're training super hard, but they are loving it. And you can tell they're having fun. So it should look like fun. And everyone should be treating everybody with respect. And you'll know it when you see it. If it doesn't feel right and it feels negative, probably not the right place. Okay. Well, there you have it. Why martial arts? So um, if you guys like the podcast and it's it's something that's uh, giving you useful information, um Leave us a review on iTunes or share it on social media. Um, if you're hearing this and you want to find us, we're on social media. It's the Academy MN. Um, so you can just search that up on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, and those are our, our social media channels. We're also on YouTube. Um, yeah, that's all I got. That's it. And remember, hey, training is the heart of the martial arts. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.